Hi everybody, welcome to Archie Marathon. Today, we're at Marricksville Library by Merrick, BVN. Marricksville. Marrick. Not Marricks View. Like most Australians, I will use whatever vowel I want, wherever I want. From Marricks. You. Where's the S coming from? Marricksville. What? Marrickville. Yes. Oh, I've never known that. I've always thought there was an S in there. <laughs> Marricksville. I'm not doing the intro. Fuck it. No, he sucks. <laughs> you do the intro yourself. I'm serious. I'm not doing it. Hi everybody, welcome to Archie Marathon. Today we are at the Marrickville Library by BVN. In Sydney. An amazing building that's a product of good community driven activity. And it's a beautiful reuse of an existing hospital. Roll intro, <laughs> I guess. You wanna roll down the stairs? I'm waiting for that kid to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On a little scooter and just to be fanging past and roll intro. <laughs> <laughs> Where has he got? No, he's gone. Oh, that would be great. Roll intro. <laughs> uh. This site was gifted as a leftover unused hospital to the council for like a dollar to use as a community centre and library. The only problem is. They had no money. Huge site. And what they did was they partnered with a developer and they developed half of the site with polite but very generic apartments. They're doing their job. And that funded this development for a community center and a library on this side. Built by the developer to the full specification. Well, this is the key to the success of this whole thing is that BVN, incredibly good and experienced architects, specified absolutely everything so that when it came down to the temptation, as developers do, because they're, they're, they're uh, meant to deliver profits, to cut, the temptation to cut corners meant that, that BVN could be like, uh-huh, and the community could be like, we specified that, so everything here, including the furniture, it's just like obscenely good quality. And it's all the stuff that usually gets value managed which means that's a cute way of saying all the money gets pulled out of it. Um, Let's go have a look, yeah? Let's go have a look. Woo! So we've got an original library. No, no. We've got a regional hospital. There's an original hospital just there. Um, and you can see the light coming through there. They've worked really hard to have this separation between the new and the old. But you can see how the new part of the library responds to that. Basically these pitched roofs that follow the same angle. And so you get a series of pitched roofs, domestic scale, but it creates this huge space. The very clever thing about the way that BBN has dealt with these spaces is that at any one point there's only really two levels. However, there are four levels throughout. And the problem with having more than two levels is they would have had to sprinkle the whole place. So again, really experienced architect finding out how to save money and spend it on the actual usable public space instead of on stuff like sprinklers. Amazing amount of recycled timber, as you can see. Which was a big part of the community briefing. So community put together the brief, worked with BVN in consultation. Um, and that was a huge part to get recycled timber and use it throughout. It's great how this is actually, how soft this reads, but this is actually all really the steel structure that they've deliberately left off a grid. So you've got two columns here and then a column there and then different spans so that it doesn't have this um, sort of controlled, manufactured space layout. But also it feels like a forest. Mm. Which is what they're going for. You've got, so you've got these columns that go up, they don't quite touch the roof. You've got a much lighter canopy above of the perforated plywood. The perforations uh, allow the sound to sort of get dulled. You don't have that strong reverberation off a hard flat surface. So libraries have changed in nature, haven't they? 
like, what is the point of a library we're really asking ourselves when the internet took off. They were repositories for all of our collective information, but now they're much more community centres. So most of the spaces are actually dedicated for sitting, collecting together, um, for studying, and the amount of books is actually quite minimal. So this great space can be used as an amphitheatre, but also all that furniture is movable, so they can reconfigure that and actually run events in that space. The, and it spills out to the courtyard outside. Yeah, all those doors can be thrown open and they don't actually have like a check system here. So they're, unlike a lot of libraries that really control the entry and exit to stop people pinching books, they've got it so you can just throw all of that open directly from this main space. The manager also told us that they were not sure about this seating. They thought it might be a waste of space that would never get used. But they've been, and, and BBN used, you know, you get maybe three trust me cards with a client and this was one of the ones they spent saying trust us this is going to work and the manager tells us this is amazing how often this is used informally but also when it's a event space as well. You can see the effort with which they've tried to articulate the roof as its own element. So the timber goes up and then it has this sort of break where the steel is. It doesn't touch the original roof of the hospital. It uh, the framing doesn't continue through, the glazing at the side just goes up. So you can read this all the way out where they've got the glazing right at the very end. So in terms of articulation of form, that is its own bit of architecture that is just hanging above this forest of activity. But that shape is also as a result of the gable shape of that roof, of the existing. Yeah. So that's just a folding form and it gets smaller and smaller as it goes to the outside which is a good example of dealing with heritage in a, a clever, sensitive way. Instead of pretending that you are a continuation of the roof and becoming a lie, because it is only a single pitch, it's to have a conversation with it. This is a contemporary building that represents the time it lives in. It's having a good conversation, respectful in terms of scale, but it leaves it alone. Now, there's some people, uh, architects, <laughs> criticise the entry space. Um, because you actually come down off the street into a shared space and then come through that park. Um, when you get to this space, which is incredible, there, there is no way out onto the street from here. But I think, we think, that's actually part of the success is you get people lining these, this window, looking out into the street, studying. But to get into the library, you actually have to come off the street, go down, get away from the traffic, go into the little park and then through into that main central space. I love the deep, um, deep window mullion mm. there. Mm. And it's perfect height that people actually pull stools there. You can see just over there. Yeah. Go, have a seat. Oh, you, why thank you. You're welcome. You can and sit down there and that window mullion becomes a working <laughs> surface. The other great thing about this is, um, this is where there's natural ventilation. So there's a whole um, labyrinth below us as well as some other services where cool air can be drawn through and you see the big triangles in the in the pitched roof that's where there's exhaust so you get this natural ventilation through this so you actually get the slightest of breeze coming up your skirt the cafe's over there so there's actually a two-way cafe that's the cafe outside that feeds outside but also feeds the inside it's another cool thing from the, the management too, is you can take food wherever you want in this Oh library. really? Yes, they haven't stopped you, they, they want to be a community centre first and books nowadays aren't as valuable as they once were, so it's like if the books suffer, so be it. Yeah, so it, it's often the space. case though, the, the library books are not, doesn't last really. Mm. So you know, the amount of books they lose in terms of how it draws people into the space, they actually use it, that's a, just a casualty. This brick this is all um, the old hospital demolished, all the old buildings um, from the... God, what's our orientation, Kev? North is that way. North is that way? I think so. So all of the original hospital buildings that weren't kept, cleaned up, rebuilt on site. Beautiful handrails, beautiful timber details. Yeah, with the light underneath. So you can see where you're going, but you're not getting blinded by it. And then look, so we've got the same huge roof coming through, but now we're actually inhabiting the roof. It's like a little tree house up here. Mm. 
it's a new structure. So it actually touches at that point. But that's not, it's the old bricks reassembled on site. It touches on one side, doesn't touch on the other side. But then when we come to this point, this is where we get a clash of the new and the old. And they've dealt with it really well. Where the new and the old always is difficult to deal with, here they've exposed it, they've brought it through. This is all probably rebuilt, but it's actually the same members. You can see the age in the timber. And there's a gap between the old and the sort of new form, and also the roofs going through there. And the light coming through because they're not touching. The new and the old are not touching. So it bounces light in through the space. And so you get these great little moments. You know, there's a lintel there where there used to be a window. So you get this, you're suddenly like, oh, we're in this loft space. Um, and that's where you then have these moments where you get this cheeky little space with a bit of baby vomit on the seat. Ew, the things I do for Archie Marathon. I didn't sit in there, it's all right. <laughs> and then just this great connection down to... The old hospital um, main floor, isn't it? Yeah, that was one of the wards. This is great too, that we're actually up in the roof space of both the new and the old buildings, but you get a view straight out back to the busy street as well. These are nice captured moments, aren't they? Instead of losing the windows, it's just you still get that connection between spaces. And another gap between the old and the new, and just creates this great little personalised moment. That's what's really good about this building, is the scale can be huge at times, civic, and grand for the community, but then you'll always have these little moments, which is really important if you're designing a library or a good bar. So we're going into the heritage part. So most of this was protected, so they couldn't remove a lot of the walls, which meant that you were left these odd little um, rooms to the side, which BVN convinced the client we should keep and use those as places you can actually um, book out. And the oh, librarians. I love the. It looks like a bed. Yeah, have a little nap there. No, but it looks like a, like a hospital bed. Mm. Yeah. All the glazing needed to be kept as well. On the eastern edge, you've got the balconies. Uh, that is where they used to wheel the beds out. So now that's just outdoor study space, but it's also where all, all the offices for the, um, for the staff are. Usually they're the last kind of, they're the leftover spaces that aren't really thought about, but they're actually quite spectacular here because of the scale that these needed to be to get beds out onto them. So these are the trusses where that sitting space was before. So you can see the level change that we've, oh, yeah. we've done. Hence the half level. And then this balcony on the western side, you can see part of the old hospital. You can see the, uh, the Mervac development that funded all of this. And then looks down into a little community children's garden, which is at the back, back of the library. Where that garden there is, Kev, that's the that's landscaping that's actually over the top of the ramp. To the car park, underground car park. Yeah, which is used by both the community facility and the housing, but it's landscape, so on this community side, you just see greenery. The other cool thing is that all over this building, where there's a timber column, there's quite often a stainless steel downpipe hidden behind it. You don't notice from the most public zones, which is pretty cool. Like you really just don't clock it at all. Mm. And these are overflows, these triple overflows. Which must have been brilliant the other day, because the main downpipe you can see almost looks like a stainless steel column and these are just overflows. The other day it was just like bucketing rain. These would have just gone nuts, don't you reckon? Yeah. It would have been cool to be here. But here's that whole thing about the, what's the main thing, the roof and the datum of the, of the building is quite clear what's actually going on, that the roof is almost floating above mm. all that. And so that other zone, which is just sort of open community spaces, that's the same architecture as this box below. 
So they're, they're two bits of related architecture and then this roof hovers above and it hovers over that entry space, that grand, tall um, public space, and that's related to this building. The floating roof over the top of the pavilion form, you can see that. So this is the timber box underneath the floating roof. But then inside, you can see this other scale that is created. You know, what's that, 2.1? And that's got the window, that's got more of the, um, the cooling and services zone. But there's that thickness in the, in the frame. Yeah. So that allows for the ventilation and services. And that's actually the suction, the sound of, of just air pressure, mm. if you can hear it. And then they've just followed that datum through, so you've just then got the books. Um, is an extra part of that depth coming through. It's great, the natural light coming through. That slit, yeah, bouncing off that slate. The lazy thing would have been just to either get rid of it or smash straight into it. Isn't this good? At no point are you, is there more than two levels. So there's one level, two levels, one level, two level. Yeah, so you can see the kind of half levels slot into each other. The cool thing too about a lot of the, um, you have these moments where you can see through the space, but then there are these solid moments. So you can actually get away. There are these really great heights so you can get away from everybody. They can't see, but you're still part of it. You can still hear things going on. One here, one there, one over there. Hmm. One thing, Kev, that you and I bang on about a lot is the edge condition. Humans like inhabiting the edge. I love this row of seats along here. So this is the original building. This is the structure of the new. And then you've just got the eave of the original building there and these windows. And it just creates this really lovely little spot. So what are you saying is the structure has helped define the bay? Yeah. Because otherwise it's just open, but it gives you a definition yeah. of space. It gives you a sense of enclosure and connection. You get little glimpses back out into the shared public space, back into the reading rooms. It's a great sense of scale. And we like real things. That's why we like bricks and timber, because we actually like touching real things. Look at this junction. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the big reveal, isn't it? Yeah. So from those main sort of step seats, you can really see clearly to the sky through there. That's good, there's a lot of effort in there, but it's well worth it. Yeah, and it's clear through there as well. It shows so much respect to the original building. This is the new service core that's added, and so when you come out, you do engage with the building. Oh yeah, you come straight out of this lift and then you're like, hi old, will hi, old window. Andrew, there you go, you can see the half level split. This is one level. But oh. up a few steps, it's actually another level. Yeah. So it's actually not full levels. Yeah. But so that's two levels there, and then from there on, we're back to two levels on this side. Yeah. So it's really interesting play of scale. So this is the bridging element that goes between the library and the pavilion. It's a great little moment where you can see the old hospital and the new apartments. You can really feel the breeze coming through. It's just yeah. really comfortable cooling, just slight cooled air. That's the best thing about natural ventilation is it is big volumes of air moving at slow speed so it just feels like a really lovely breeze. It's not like air conditioning where it's like one source just gushing freezing cold mm. air at you. It's also quite clever because it's you know things for view it's a window is fixed glazed it's easy to do that, mm -hmm. and then places where you actually need open and ventilation, they're different tasks, yeah. they're doing different things. Yeah, I, that's a really good point, which I think most people, architects and lay people alike, they think, well, this is where I've got a hole, so that needs to be openable for breeze as well. It's actually better and more efficient to make your glazing fixed. Which and is for view, and then things that opens, and you can have fly screen, you can have auto protection and shutter and ceiling lot easier. In a solid bit of wall, mm. instead of messing up your beautiful glazing. Because look at this glazing, they've actually got, this is, this is double glazing, this is pr really serious stuff, but it's all within the thickness of that timber. So when you look straight on, you hardly see any of it. Where if you had a part of it that was openable, you'd have to have a whole heap of framing, a handle, and all of that. So it, gets, it starts to get in the way. Mm. 
Let's see if we can go in there. We were told that um, it's so popular that people just had to go and find other places to inhabit. So there weren't actually chairs here originally, and these have been added since then. But this just shows the success of really subtle moves without reinventing the wheel. You've got already this depth where there's all of the, the passive ventilation and then using that depth, just extending it out to sort of half the column depth. So you can sit here and look at that view, back down to the cafe, back down to the garden, but a really beautiful, quiet place to work. Even the church spire you can see from here. And you get this beautiful bounce light on the edge of these deep windows. Well, All sitting here, here, this is my only focus because I can't see the other glazing, which is actually lovely. You just get that splay of light. Actually, I just realised we did all that with a mask on. <laughs> Kev wants me to do it again. I'm not going to do it. Look at these great little moments. You don't need to go and build a whole room to get a sense of your own space. And then, like, some are double, some are single. And these are community rooms, multifunction in there. And that's really, the, that, that's all this particular building is. is pavilion. Those spaces on this corridor and then, then community spaces to one side. And then downstairs is a larger space that opens out to the courtyard. So that's the stair in the cafe that comes down into the library that way. This is a separate building, but it's part of the overall roof structure. Well, you can actually see where the roof structure ends. But this can work separately to the library. You can have a door here into this really lovely size sort of lobby space, really simple. But then looks back into that shared park. But then you have this big community space where there's hooks and things like that and all the services you can get to, so it's really adaptable. But then this massive bank of doors that goes all the way along where you can then go and connect the public space with this big shared community room. Isn't that amazing? Oh, what are you doing there? I love it, all through the library are these things just at the perfect height to hide away. Well, this is children's library, so. You've got a normal bench seat. You can sit there and hide away. But yeah. The others are a little bit different. You could have got a little cut ways through them. So you can crawl through there or chat to people on the oh, other that's side. Cool, cute that children's space. Cool. Yep, perfect for you. <laughs> and a little place you can have sit a whole kids and do reading time. That's really cute there. Little Even the theatre, yeah. There's a little kids' level sink and an adults' level sink. Oh yeah. And then out here you got the, this can all be thrown open so it all becomes one big part of the library. So this is the kids garden. All of the water in this very elaborate roof is collected and pumped through all the toilets and all the gardens. And it's from here you can actually start to really see the separation between the new pavilion, the old hospital, and then that folded roof sitting on top of both of them. But what's that I hear you say, Kevin? What is my favourite part? It's got to be Peter, the kangaroo. Peter spelt both P-E-T-E-R and P-E-T-A. Because? Because Peter, the kangaroo, had a huge set of balls on him, they were telling us before. <laughs> they were a little bit too big. They were a bit too big and the kids noticed a bit too much. So they've actually had to remove Peter's balls. <laughs> it's a castrati. <laughs> and then I asked the manager if there was, um, if there's hanging above her desk, but she said they've gone missing. I don't know where they are, but I, know, I bet you're in some architect's office, this. Peter's balls. <laughs> Grow up, Andrew. Hmm? Grow up. I'm reading. I can read. <laughs> it's upside down. What? No, it's not. Oh, it's because I'm really smart and I can... No, nah, it's... I meant to do that. We're on a corner and this was a closed competition, this project. Um, and we were told that everybody else built on the corner uh, except for BVN. They dug down and created this lowered public space 
and it's really successful what's happened. I, th I think it's hard to disagree. And well, it's actually interesting because I've spoken to a lot of friends, so some of them actually criticised the fact that it's actually sunken. Yeah. And without being direct access from the busy road. However, it's actually quite a nice sunken space. It's actually quite a nice view of the rooftops of the buildings. Once you get down here, that's a really good observation. You lose the cars and you just get tiled roofs and church spires and what looks like the old town hall maybe. And then the terracing actually works quite well. You've got different kind of tiered seatings and different kinds of seatings here too. And then the entrance kind of feeds out to the space, which can be used for markets and things, but unfortunately due to COVID, it hasn't happened yet, yeah. yet. But they were happening weekly, weren't they? These were markets. Well, it's designed for that. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Have you been to the Marrickville Library Community Centre? What, what do you think? Do you think we even need libraries? Do they serve a purpose anymore? It seems like we now call community centres libraries, yeah? Study spaces. What do you think? Is this a good library? Do you like it? What's your favourite library in Sydney? Leave a comment. We love you guys. I would argue... Go on then. Yeah, I would argue that libraries should be great destinations. Like, I would not... I've, I've lived in Sydney, I've never been to Marrickville. Ah. Yeah, it's the fact that there is this library, then I go, ah, oh, I want to go check it out. And they're great spaces. It's well... It's good. And, you know, it's on the, the recent IQ Marathon Sydney, this is one of the top five for many participants. Oh, the people that joined the tour? Yeah. This was in their top five? Yeah. That's saying a lot, because we went to the Opera House. Well, we don't count the Opera House. We don't count the Opera House. Because it's a different league, man. It's a different league, yeah. best building in the world. Yeah. Yeah, the Opera House is, yeah, almost as good as, as a Austin Maynard Architects building. Almost. <laughs> yeah? Uh. They copied Empire House, though, with the white shingle thing. Jorn Utzon's like, yeah, we're going to do that.